Today we're going to be opening the Good Book of Rubo with all precision possible. The Good Book of Rubo has many great drawings, but today we're going to take a look at this one, plate number 14. And there's this weird little device up here called a winding stick. I have made lots of winding sticks over the year. They're a really simple project, and they'd be a great beginner project because basically they're just two sticks of wood that have matching angles on them. And it allows you to see the twist and wind in wood. If you want to see how to use them, I've got videos on that as well. But these are my most common go-to ones. The problem is they're only about 18 inches long. And I really like a pair that are four foot long that would give me far more accuracy and allow me to do larger boards. And I thought, let's do them the Rubo style this time with those little dingly hopper things that fit on the end. So let's jump into that. This pair of sticks I'm going to make out of a scrap piece of hickory. The most important thing is that the grain is nice and straight and true. The cleaner that is, the better. I want to find out where the center of this is because I'm going to rip it right down the center. This board is slightly thicker than three quarter inch, which is just about what I need to fit into this. And I'm going to rip it right down the middle and that will give me my two sticks. And that way I know that both of them are from the same stock. They're both going to warp and twist in the same direction. And I should still have really good sticks to work with. So whenever making winding sticks, I try and pull them out of the same board. This is going to be a resawing process, but even with a thinner stick, it's still going to require um, that same focus. You want to come right down the middle. And anytime I move over to one side or the other, I'm going to be reducing the thickness of my sticks. And I want to make sure that they are just about the right size. So nice true line. Every so often, stop, rotate it around, and come at it from the other side. And that way you're always tracking on the line on your side of the board until you pop right through. Four foot of cut and done. I'm gonna pop up the planing stop and then pinch it between the bench dog and this will allow me to work on it. Long thin sticks can be difficult to secure, especially when the plane is dull. So we're gonna take it back and sharpen it up. And it's really quick, I just do one, two, three, strop it and it's done. Uh, I, I don't spend much time on it at all and it comes out beautifully every time. It's one of those things that's a skill to learn. It takes a little bit to learn, but once you learn it, it just makes it so fast to just go back and sharpen it. And you'll notice it's popping up here. That's one of the problems with long, thin pieces. Sometimes I'll put a piece of uh, double-sided tape underneath it to hold it in the middle or some other place. And sometimes the grain switches, so you have to come at it from the other side. Yeah, uh, little things you have to work with and you just kind of get used to it over time. And we just want to plane these down to the appropriate thickness to then fit into the, the small little pieces that we want to work with. And so now we've got them to the right thickness. Now they need to be to the right height. We want to make sure that they can fit in between. And these are a little over an eighth inch too tall. But I want the two of them to be exactly the same. So we're going to plane them together. And that means put them side by side and plane them down to thickness. And then go back and test it again and then do some more. And test it again and do some more. And eventually I found out that it's really really close and it's sliding in from one end and it gets down to right about there and stops so it means I can just have to work from that point on and so I keep that in mind and go back and plane it again until eventually it slides all the way down and now I have them done and at this point they're done they're winding sticks I don't need to do anything more everything else is just aesthetics it's just for fun it's just for a little bit of focus but I'm going to be making a couple of the the wooden feet that are uh, kind of like uh, Rubo's and originally I was just going to be making these um, straight up, but then I saw that Tay Tool made a set, and so I thought I'm going to make a set and use Tay Tools for the other one, and I thought this would be kind of fun. So I'm going to drill a hole right in the middle of this scrap block that I have, and this will become the bottom of each one. So I have that half round on either side, and I don't have to then cut out that half round. I cut out the half round on both sides. Then we'll put the winding stick onto the block and mark out exactly how wide it is. And then I can set my marking gauge to those marks. That lets me know that these are reality rather than some random measurement that I tried to pull off and make it match. I'm going to transfer those marks around to the other side. And this way I can chop from both sides, just like a standard mortise, making sure that my lines line up from the marking gauge. And that way I have the exact same measurement from one side to the other. Um, I'm going to try chopping it out uh, later on. Once I get close to coming to the other side, I'm actually going to put it up on a, uh, a block that I can, you know, it's a sac sac sacrificial block. And we're going to treat it just like a, uh, just like a mortise, except for I'm not going to go really deep at the beginning. I'm going to go just a little bit past halfway on the first set. And then I can flip it over and come at it from the other side. Um, so just like a mortise, follow the bevel of the chisel along, stay away from your end lines as long as possible. And then when you get it all cleared out, then you come back in and go right down your end grain lines and to give yourself a nice clean surface. Uh, it's a little harder to remove the, the, the pieces out uh, of the middle when you're not doing full chop and wedging, um, but it does, uh, does work pretty well. Just take your patience. 
So we're going to try fitting it on there, and it's just about the right fit, uh, except for I want it to be able to slide. So we're going to take off a little bit more, and you do that with a file. It comes out very, very quickly. I have this square file that makes quick work going all the way around it, and now it slides nicely all the way along the block. And just like that, we have a functioning end piece. Uh, let's make this thing a little more fancy. Now, I could do the, the fringe curves on it and make it all pretty, uh, but if you know anything about wood by right, I like chamfers. They are what separate us from the animals, and therefore we will use them. And so put chamfers on all the edges, and there you go. I've got one block. Um, you need to make three more of these, but uh, thankfully, um, Tay Tools has some that they now sell, and so I thought, hey, let's uh, let's just use these. And they actually are aluminum, um, and so quick, easy, and relatively affordable. And they actually also sell a wooden pair, but uh, if you want to make them yourself, they're actually really easy to make, too. But I thought I would, I would show those. Next thing I want to do is mark where the center of this is. Knowing the center of the board That's means you know where its balance point is. Now, if you're just using them as normal sticks, you want that balance point to be at the middle of the board so it's not going to be tipping off one way or the other. Uh, for these ones, the balance point isn't quite as important, but it's nice to know that and put it in there. So I'm going to measure out the middle, and I'm going to put in a punch in there. Now, I want to put in a rod, but that means I need to find out exactly the right thickness. So I'm going to do several test holes and find ones See. that match my rod exactly. They're all a quarter inch, so they all should be correct, but they're all slightly different. And I want it to be a nice, tight fit. So I'm finding the drill bit that gives me the, the cut that I want. And now we can go back and drill those out. So I'm going to tap the sticks so that they're exactly where they want them to be because I have the, the location mark on one of them. And then we're going to drill through until the point pops out the other side and then we can turn around and drill from the other side. And this is why you would want a ratcheting brace uh, so that you can actually ratchet. In this case, I didn't know, need to go very far, so it'll be twisting back and forth, and that's fine, because I'm just kind of running it out and reaming the hole. And there are my holes, and both those are exactly the right place. So we can put the brass in there and then realize, oh, wait, I know I need to make them actually cut them ahead of time. <laughs> We're going to cut off a couple little pieces of brass and then round off the corners with a file so that they slide in nicely. And then we can put those in. Um, I want to just apply them with a little bit of CA glue. I could use high glue or something else, but there's, there's no structural integrity to this. They just need to be um, in there. So a little bit of CA glue, some accelerator, and it's, it's good to go. Just make sure you don't glue your hand down. And uh, yeah, <laughs> they're sticking up a little bit on either side, and that's very easy to come back and clean off, especially with the brass. You can hit a few strokes with the file, and you're into it. Smooth it out, and you can get a really nice clean surface. Now, the, the only problem with that really nice, clean, planed surface is that I need to actually get some dust in there so that it absorbs the finish a little bit better. So I'm just going to hit it with some 400 grit sandpaper all the way around, and then we can actually apply the finish. Hmm, what finish am I going to use? <laughs> Homemade boiled linseed oil. Um, it doesn't pop quite as much with a hickory as it does with oak, uh, but it still looks really, really good. Uh, hickory isn't one of my favorites. It has all the struggle of oak, uh, but without all of the, the beauty of it. So after applying the paste wax, the, the boiled linseed oil, letting it soak in as much as it wants, we'll then come back and wipe off all the excess so that it's relatively dry. Let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then we can apply the paste wax. Available on woodbyright.com. <laughs> Put it on some rag uh, or on uh, steel wool, and then wipe it onto the surface. We want to just embed the surface with the paste wax, make sure it gets into all of the pores, uh, make sure the whole surface is covered in it. And then we're going to let it sit for about a half an hour or so, come back and scrub it off. Um, just polish it off, and that's all you need. Just like that, you have winding sticks. Happy. So the problem with traditional winding sticks is they can tip. If something is sitting on the bench or if the board is bowed out, then it's kind of hard to make them straight. But with the Robo sticks, I can actually put them on there, and if there is a high spot in the middle, it doesn't matter because I'm actually testing this spot and this spot against that spot and that spot. So if you have a bow board, uh, you can kind of work around that. So there are special benefits. There are times when you want to use a straight stick, and so it's nice to be able to take these out and use them that way. Uh, but you can do them this way, and you can see a lot of other things. Also, I wanted to make longer ones. These ones are great, and they tell you for most boards, but if you have a wide bench and you want to exaggerate the amount that it's out, you need something that's longer. The other nice part about the stands 
is that I don't have to really worry where the center of this board is. As long as this dot is in between those two, then I know the center of gravity is going to be between them. So I could actually have the boards out like this and still get the same reading because it's going to be balancing on those two points. As long as that dot is between these two, they actually work really well to set up whatever I need. There you have it. Winding sticks and Rubo style. I, I, I was actually planning on making these and uh, doing them very similar to this. And then I saw that Tay Tools now offers these ones. They come in aluminum and wood. Uh, so I thought, eh, that'd be kind of a fun one to, to show. And I really like them. They're, they're simple, they're lightweight, and uh, they, they work really well. So you can make them yourself, you can buy them. One of the things about winding sticks is they, they're traditionally one of the first projects that anyone makes. They're a very simple project that you really can't mess up that much. And it's kind of a, a fun way to make a tool that you can use for the rest of your life. This is one of the first ones that I ever made years ago. And I still use them. And I love them. They work really well. And they're great sticks to have. I just wanted something a little longer and show you something different. A lot of them actually will have a post out here on the end so that these can't slide off. But I want to be able to put these also on these sticks uh, and uh, try out different things with it. So I didn't put that post in there, but I did like having the, the center balance point. Some people also put a darker section on one set of them so that you can see the contrast as they move back and forth. Um, but I decided to make these just simple sticks. And I like that. So I hope you like it as well. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, I do have links to these down below. Uh, let me know those. I do read through all the comments and I answer as many of them as I can get to. Thank you. That does mean a ton. Honestly, without you guys hitting like, comment, share, subscribe, um, no one would see our videos. So thank you for that. If you'd like to help out, that is a very easy way to do it. Click the little thumbs up button and thank you. On top of that, you can take it even farther. You may notice there's a bunch of names over here. They are the patrons on Patreon and thank you. Uh, without patrons, we wouldn't be here. We are completely sponsored sponsored by you, the viewer. So if you'd like to find out about that, there's links to Patreon down below, or you can click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. We have special perks for both where you can watch behind the scenes, which a few people are doing right now, and uh, you can join us there. So thank you to everyone who is supporting the channel. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Now, if you all turn with me to the good book of Rabot to a plate number 20, figure number 27. Today, we're going to be talking about the grooving plane.